Hello and welcome to the Boxing Index podcast. This is associated with the boxingindex.co.uk, which some of you may know, um, which is a box, boxing website on which we post articles about up and coming British boxers, opinion pieces, and experience features. Um, this is sort of going to be a short form, more casual um, version than what we have on the Boxing Index website, where the, the articles are more formal and we post interviews and stuff, just sort of general musings on boxings. Hopefully we'll have some guests on here after lockdown. Um, and yeah, it's just a less formal um, arena than the website. And uh, hopefully in the future, uh, Rob Sloan, who um, helps me with the Boxing Index, will be um, doing some boxing news um, videos with some cool visuals and stuff. So you won't just have to listen to me drone on. You'll also get to uh, watch some of um, Rob's videos. In, uh, t- so today, the theme of today's podcast is going to be the first fight expected after lockdown, which um, Eddie Hearn recently announced, well, at least for Matchroom, Eddie Hearn recently announced was going to be the White versus Povetkin card, um, which he said on the Sky Sports Boxing Show would happen in late July, early August. Um, So assuming boxing does return then, uh, as far as I'm aware, this will be the first card. Obviously, the British Board of Boxing Control announced um, their restrictions recently, uh, that bo- and but boxing can return in July. Uh, I know that that's led to some criticism of the rules, like the no spitting rule, because obviously how is a fighter going to go back to his corner and not spit when they've got a mouthful of blood, and how will the fighter prepare properly in ca- with their camps and sparring during social distancing? Um, so there's definitely problems to iron out, but just for the sake of this podcast, we're just going to assume that that will be the first card and that it will be happening. Um, so obviously the main events, White versus Povetkin, then on the undercard you've got Amanda Serrano versus Katie Taylor and Callum Johnson versus Igor Mikalkin. Obviously I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not. Um, and then yeah, there, there could be changes, whether that be additions or people not being on the card, um, <clears throat> or the card could even be postponed. Um, but for the sake of this podcast again, we're just going to work on the assumption that that will be the card, these are the fights that will be happening I assume there'll be more on there, and presumably, obviously, it's not going to be in Manchester Arena, obviously, if it's um, behind closed doors. But, uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, the first card, the first uh, fight on the card will be Callum Johnson versus Igor McCalkin. Um, yeah, it'll be great to see Callum back in the ring, because obviously he hasn't fought since March last year because of various injuries, um, which has yeah, so now been over a year. And, uh, yeah, it'll definitely be good to see him showcasing his skills in front of a British crowd um, because I think his last fight here was over two years ago against Frank Buglioni. And, obviously, he's 34 now, so he really needs to get active and start getting those prize fights before too long. Um, I know that uh, Joe Gallagher on Tris Dixon's podcast was absolutely convinced that he can win a rematch with Baturbiev, which is not sort of completely out of sight because obviously that was he did he did look good before the knockout. Obviously he knocked Baterbiev down. I think he's the only person to ever knock Baterbiev down. Um but for me Baterbiev may be a bit of a stretch too far for Callum. But I do think that he can win a world title. Um and yeah it should be good to see him back because I, I I've always liked the fighter's style at Gallagher's gym, um Joe Gallagher's gym. Uh it's quite front foot and it makes some exciting fights but um well, sort of fortunately and unfortunately for, for Callum, the light heavyweight division is just absolutely buzzing at the moment. It's stacked with great talent. Um, so there's a lot of good fights out there for him, but I guess that also means that there's a lot of tough fights. So a world title might be something that, that <clears throat> might not come too easily. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's definitely one of my favourite divisions at the moment. Obviously at world level, you've got Dmitry Bivol, Baturbiev, Gavodsik, Kovalev, um, who are all absolute beast so but obviously Callum showed that he can mix it at that level by knocking down Baturbiev and and I think that he could um get a world title somewhere I know the the WBO is vacant at the moment so maybe that would be a um a route he could go even domestically in that division you've got Buatzi Yard and then another guy I've noticed who's who's um coming up he's not really in the mix yet but I think he will be in the future is Dana Zaxo um and it's probably too early to tell how good he is now, but I think he's got a really like pleasing to the eye style. So I'd keep an eye out for him. Um, yes, his fight's for a European title. And although Callum's probably past that level, 
it, it will be um, nice to add that title to his collection should he win because obviously he's got the British and the Commonwealth so to add the European I, I imagine that he'd um, he'd like to have that on his on his shelf um, I haven't really seen that much of his opponent but from his record he doesn't look like a pushover he's got 23-2 and two. Yeah, um, he's been knocked out by Kovalev but I guess who hasn't who's been in that division for a long time Kovalev sort of done the rounds um, but yeah, I'd say I'm definitely predicting a uh, Callum Johnson win, probably by knockout. I imagine he'll want to put on a bit of a show, um, making his comeback. <clears throat> Obviously, provided that he uh, that he stayed in good shape through lockdown. Um, yes, yeah, so the next fight on the bill is uh, Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano, um, fighting as a chief support. It's obviously been described as uh, by Eddie Hearn as the biggest women's boxing fight of all time. And I'd have to say I'd probably agree with that because I think I was speaking to um, Claudia Trejos, who's the uh, she works for um, ESPN, DAZN, um, being a journalist in in boxing for a very long time, and she was sort of saying that it's the first fight where people like just boxing fans in general, not necessarily women's boxing fans, are genuinely excited to see this fight. Like this, this is a great fight. Um, it's a proper super fight. Um, obviously, Amanda Serrano is a seven weight world champion, which is almost like the female Manny Pacquiao, I guess. Um, like a lot of boxers couldn't even compete at seven weights physically, let alone win titles in those weights as well. Up against Katie Taylor is a two weight world champion. She's sort of the face of women's boxing at the moment. I know that would be disputed by uh, Clarissa Shields, but um, yeah, like, especially in the UK, she definitely is. Um, this this is a fight that could he, could definitely headline um, an event itself, but obviously from Eddie Hearn's perspective, I guess if you're putting White Povetkin as a pay per view, although it's a good fight, you do need strong support for that, and I think that this fight definitely provides that. Um, obviously, a win for Taylor could set up another super fight with Cecilia Breakhouse, maybe even a pursuing rematch, and I just think that's what women's boxing really needs at the moment. It's sort of teetering on the edge of something great at the moment, but it needs someone like Katie Taylor to give it that momentum, have some back-to-back super fights, get people really involved in it and excited. And then when you have when you have someone at the top providing that entertainment, people then look down, and then and then that'll start bringing other people to the forefront, start like providing other big names in the sports, and then the the more big names in the sports, the more big fights can happen. Um. Yeah, so I, I even spoke to uh, Ellie Scottney, who's a recently signed matchroom fighter. She it hasn't made a debut yet. I did an interview with her for the Boxing Index, but um, she had uh, thoughts on the Katie Taylor to Amanda Serrano fight, and she said, I think it's going to be a great fight. I want to sit on the fence. I think it's one where the styles will complement each other massively, but I think Katie Taylor will win it because I'm a massive fan of her. I'm a fan of Amanda as well, though. She's a great fighter, but I'm going for Katie Taylor. I wouldn't be surprised if it went the other way because Serrano is an animal. So yeah, she's quite back and forth there. My, I'm a bit more um, straight set on this one. I, I think Taylor's going to win it on points. I think she'll just be a bit too slick for Amanda Serrano. But to be fair, I haven't actually seen that much of Amanda Serrano. But she seems to have sort of an old school brawling style of boxing. Um, and I don't think she'll be able to pin down Katie Taylor. <clears throat> and I guess also, as I said with the... Uh, Callum Johnson fight I think it depends a lot on who's managed to stay sharp during lockdown and I think that's something I think that's an excuse we're going to hear a lot in the coming months from boxers who who haven't managed to uh, keep on their game during lockdown and and I'm not I don't maybe excuse is the wrong word because it may be valid obviously different fighters have different access to training facilities and they'll they would have been dif- dealing with um different hardships during uh, this time but yeah so I'm I'm going with a Katie Taylor win there um <clears throat> and then finally, the main event, White Pipe for Vetkin. Obviously, uh, it's probably not the fight that White wanted, and uh, you've got to, you've got to feel a bit sorry for him with the whole situation of being mandatory with the WBC for however long it's been now, and uh, and then obviously the um, adverse drug findings after the Rivas fight, which ended up being not true, which held him back, and. Uh, but I think it is a good fight. It's a good fight for him. I know he had the fight against um, Marius Wack, but I think it's a it's a proper good uh, comeback fight against a really good competitor. 
Um, I thought it was a slightly strange choice considering I thought he lost to Michael Hunter on the AJ versus Ruiz 2 undercard. Um, and Povetkin's quite old, so maybe Hunter would have been a better opponent. But I think in terms of um, what Eddie Hearn and, and White are trying to do, keeping him fresh but also keeping him on track to that world title, so I think Povetkin could actually be the um, the perfect choice because... I don't think he's going to provide too much of a threat to White, but it's enough of a he's enough of a draw, especially in the UK, having beat David Price and Huey Fury, that he um, that he sort of gives a level of credibility to this fight. Um, so yeah, I think it was definitely the, s- the smart choice in terms of balancing the quality of the fight with and and the uh, financial aspects with the lack of risk for White. Um, and then yeah, as I mentioned, Povetkin's quite a big draw in the UK. Beat Price, beat Fury, beat well Huey Fury, and then obviously lost to Joshua, <clears throat> and then like uh, marketability wise, it's been billed as the Battle of the Left Hooks, uh, which makes it seem quite exciting, and and it probably is to be fair. Dillian White's obviously got a great left hook on him, and and we saw what um, Povetkin's left hook did to David Price. I think White should beat him, but he definitely is a viable threat. The styles should mix nicely. It should be a bit of a scrap. Um, White White tends to end up with these sort of shorter, stockier guys like he did with Chisora, Rivas, and, and they have made for great fights, so hopefully we'll see that again. Um, there was obviously a lot of talk for about Andy Ruiz um, maybe being in Vivekin's place here, but uh, and there's been this whole dispute on Twitter. I'm, I'm not particularly convinced by Ruiz that he really want, wanted that fight. I think he just, after he won the world titles, I think he just... Obviously, with the rematch with Joshua, he he took his foot off the gas, but I don't think he's put it back on since then. Hopefully, his new uh, trainer, Eddie Reynoso, will get him back on the straight and narrow because he is a quality fighter and he can be involved in some exciting fights in the heavyweight division if he gets his act together. Um, Yeah, so uh, so I think White's going to win. Obviously, he managed to get out to Portugal before the lockdown. Um, and I think having a, a long camp, because obviously the fight was meant to be on May the 2nd, so he would have been out there for a while, he'd been training for a while, and I think that actually could have done him some good. He looks good in good shape, obviously that's from his Instagram pictures, which you have to take with a pinch of salt, because nowadays people could do all sorts on Instagram, changing how they look, but um, yeah, I think that could a, a long layoff could have helped him get his head clear and get back in fighting shape, so... I can only see this going one way, um, Dillian White, most likely by knockout. Um, but obviously, he can go. He can go the distance as well. He's shown that with a lot of quality opponents that he can go the distance and win on points. Um, but I do think he'll be very eager to, to entertain. He keeps saying this maximum violence slogan he's got going at the moment. So I think he will want to push for the knockout. But hopefully, he doesn't push for the KO too hard because. Yeah, because that never really works when you go searching for it. Fighters tend to sort of smother their work and it gets a bit messy. Um, but obviously you can't write Povetkin off. You can never say never in the heavyweight division, though. Um, cause Povetkin is dangerous. And, and I guess that's why the heavyweight division draws more eyes than the other divisions. Um, but assuming Dillian does win, um, he'll now be he's now even closer with this whole little delay with coronavirus, even closer to his long-awaited world title shot, which should be in February 2021 if the WBC keeps their word. Um, I'm not sure where Povetkin goes if he loses this. I guess he'll sort of fall into a, a gatekeeper role. Maybe he could um, take on the winner of Joe Joyce Dubois. I think that could be a good fight and a good sort of step up in level for both of them to see whether they're ready for world level. And obviously, yeah, as I mentioned before, he's got a good name in the UK, so that could be a um, uh, a good fight financially as well. Um, but I think he must be close to retirement now. I mean, this this could potentially be his last fight, but he's really getting on, so I think uh, retiring soon wouldn't be too bad of an option for him. So, yeah, if I go over the card again, so that's wins for White, Taylor and Johnson for me. Um, you can probably detect a bit of home bias, but... I do I do genuinely believe those will be the results. And um, that's all for the podcast. So let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments. And hopefully I'll start doing these a bit more often. Maybe once a week to start with. Maybe I'll add a few more in as I go. Um, and hopefully, yeah, as I said, I'll get guests. So you don't just have to listen to me drone on. And I won't just be reviewing cards like this. I'll be sort of discussing some of the big questions in boxing. Hopefully doing some, some interviews on here and whatever else comes to mind. So um, thanks for listening and stay safe.